that album you were just listening to. You know what you should do with it? Because it's time again to check out 10 more underrated metal bands that deserve your undivided attention. And we're starting with Acherontis. This Greek black metal band has been slinking in the shadows and summoning nightmares since 2007, and with an already impressive nine albums under their belt. Most recently, this includes Psychic Death in 2020 and Malocchio in 2022. Acherontis have always taken atmosphere to the next level, often feeling more like being in the midst of some chaotic spell casting. The shrieking tremolos, pounding drums, and harrowing chanting surround you like a whirlwind of pure evil. Check out Leviathan, the fervent scales and reverence, just for a basic idea of what black magic they can conjure. Please stop, you demon! You're a demon! Then I'm very excited to finally include the number 12 looks like you. I really can't say enough good things about this Jersey band. Not only are they every bit as talented as the peers they performed alongside in the 2000s, like the Dillinger Escape Plan, their album Worse Than Alone is still probably one of my top 10 albums of all time. I challenge you to find a more diverse and eclectic release in mathcore, mixing abrasive technical noise, jazz, death metal, and Latin music, and all somehow flowing together seamlessly for a final runtime that is much more than just the sum of its parts. I also enjoy 2007's Mongrel, and Scene Nerds will likely direct you to 2005's Nuclear Sad Nuclear, but in my opinion, Worse Than Alone is their true magnum opus. Prove me wrong, kids. Prove me wrong. Next up, we have Adversarial. I'm cheating a little with this one as they only have two full-length albums to date, but these Canadians also go all the way back to 2007, and goddamn is their 2015 effort an absolute masterwork in black and death metal nihilism. <laughs> This is always one of the first albums I think of when it comes to effective use of raw and gritty production. I love that wet cardboard under the sign of hell sounding bass kick and it's perfectly offset by an inferno of noisy atmospheric guitars. I cannot recommend Death Endless Nothing and the Black Knife of Nihilism enough and I hope we get a follow up sometime soon. I need it! Then it's high time we talk about Calma. Now when it comes to melodic death metal, most people have heard of the likes of In Flames, At The Gates, Arch Enemy, and Dark Tranquility. But despite their eight albums since 2000, not nearly as many are familiar with Calma. And it's a damn shame because this Finnish band has a very consistent discography. Brimming with vitality, killer, folky riffs, and bombastic synth elements, this is death metal that will get you moving. And where it lacks some of the wankery of their regional peers, Children of Bodom, I'd argue that they have an even stronger songwriting presence and effective purveying of truly epic atmosphere. From 2000's Swamp Lord to 2018's Palo, you really can't go wrong with any album to get your swamp metal on. <laughs> Y'all, we're just halfway through, but if you're enjoying the video, please do hit the like button, maybe subscribe because I put videos out like this every single week. And let me know down in the comments, what are your favorite underrated metal bands? But next up, we have Imperium Decadence. <laughs> I was actually shocked doing my research to find that this German atmospheric black metal duo has actually been around since 2004, as I didn't really catch wind of them until album number 6 in 2019's When We Are Forgotten. Regardless, their sound is deeply absorbing and introspective, one recommended for fans of Cult of Fire, Magua, and Blutaus Nord.
black metal for meditation and yoga, taking the listener on a cosmic journey that seems to straddle the line between life and death. The mood is overwhelmingly melancholy, but with just the slightest tinges of light always slightly out of reach, and they just drop their latest opus in Into Sorrow Evermore. Five more minutes. I was just getting comfortable. Getting sludgy here with LLNN. LLNN describe themselves as post-apocalyptic hardcore from Copenhagen, taking a foundation of sludge and infusing it with both the howling aggression of hardcore and more subtle and atmospheric elements. They've been gaining some ground with the four albums they've dropped since 2016, as well as performances with the likes of Cult of Luna, Cloud Rat, and Russian Circles, but I feel that they still deserve way more recognition at this point. Giant thunderclaps of jarring distortion, abrasive screams, and earth-shattering blasts of snare, bass, and cymbals deliver unbridled emotion. Alongside eerie synth soundscapes influenced by the likes of John Carpenter, Stanley Kubrick, and Silent Hill's Akira Yamaoka. It was foretold by gyromancy. Then we have Neck of the Woods. Another band with fewer releases at just two full lengths, a demo and an EP, but they've been active since 2013. You may have seen me wearing this shirt in a number of videos, one that they sent me after my coverage of 2020's The Annex of Ire. But aside from just being great guys like that, and by the way, every time I bring them up in the comments, there's always somebody speaking really positive of some experience they had with them. Their music is another example of metalcore that I think even people who normally hate the genre could really get behind. Their style is a crushing blend of progressive, death metal, tech, and groove, with influences including Between the Buried and Me, Rush, Misery Signals, Gojira, and the Dillinger Escape Plan. I've even described their most recent material as metalcore meets Rivers of Nile. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Then something we talked about a few times last year, we have Veilburner. I just recently praised this Pennsylvania black metal duo for their kinda sorta self-titled 2022 album ending up on my top 10 black metal albums of the year list, but they go all the way back to 2014, dropping six full-length albums in that brief eight-year window, all with a very mind-bending psychedelic sound that will send most listeners into madness. It's like Death Spell Omega hopped up on LSD and PCP with some campy 50s sci-fi noises for good measure. I became a fan of Veilburner in a big way with their 2016 album The Obscure Right, but I think with each album they only further master the dark art of pure lunacy. <laughs> on kind of a similar note, we have Alterage. If you love Portal, you need to also be listening to Alterage. Hailing from Spain, this experimental death metal band has been churning out album after album of rusted machinery guitars, billowing black smoke and apocalyptic energy. From 2016's Nihil to their fifth record, Soul Corrupto, in 2022, they only become more adept at crafting chilling dystopian ruin. Personally, I think I'm partial to Ending Hint and The Approaching Roar, but really it's hard to go wrong with any of these dissonant and technical assaults on the senses. They're all sonic lobotomies akin to being at the receiving end of Turok's cerebral bore. And then we have Tanger Cavalry. This unique take on folk metal was the brainchild of Chinese native nature Gangan Bagal. And over the course of just nine years, him and his bandmates churned out an insanely prolific 15 albums, mainly in a style of Mongolian folk metal, utilizing traditional Eastern instruments, throat singing, and imagery centered around shamanism and Chinese mythology. <laughs> I 
I caught wind of this band first in 2015 with Ancient Call, and from then on, I was captivated by their ability to transport the listener to a place very different from the traditional Scandinavian approach to the genre. And it was this special quality in nature's seemingly bottomless drive and hustle that took them all the way to a performance at Carnegie Hall. Sadly, Nature died by suicide in 2019 at just 29, but his contributions to metal will live on forever. I really want to use my own effort, you know, my very limited power to bring out, you know, the best part of the world that I know. Y'all check out this playlist for more of my most underrated bands videos. And let me know again down in the comments, what are your bands that have been around for at least 10 years and have around four albums that you think deserve way more attention? But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.